What's up guys, we are back with another Super 7 Ultimates review, jumping back into the Ghost line, taking a look at the next in the series of Papas that we're getting. We got Papa 1, what, last year? And now, of course, it makes perfect sense that we're going to get Papa 2, the, the next in the line of the Unholy Brethren. And I'm really excited about this guy because I really liked Papa 1, so Papa 2 is, is clearly going to be more of the same, which makes perfect sense and I'm I'm here for it. So we've got him here in our standard ultimate style packaging. So you've got the, the slip cover, trapezoidal shape. We've got a gray color scheme this time around with the crucifix uh, on the front and the ghost logo on the back. Uh, pop that slip cover off and you can see his unholiness in all of his glory there. In the window, you've got that sort of cathedral uh, blister window there. You've got the ghost logo on the front and then the back of the box gives us the crucifix again as well as a bio for this particular dude. So let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go out of the package, our Ultimates Papa Emeritus 2 back again for another ritual. And I'm super excited about this guy. I really like the first figure enough so that I got a second one to be able to display both versions of his evil garments. This is my favorite Papa though when it comes to you know the the evil family that that they're portraying. This is my favorite. Uh, I love a lot about this particular album, and then of course the look for this Papa. So it's a lot of the same. You know, I'm, I'm not surprised there's a lot of reuse here, like a whole lot of reuse, but that's okay. Uh, it is basically, well, maybe the same guy, right? Who knows? It's a mystery. And then of course we have very similar soft goods. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the soft goods off. We, we will disrobe him, and then we'll get to articulation because obviously, obviously you can't see anything right now. Now, as far as moving this guy around, he is pretty normal for Ultimates. Nothing too crazy here. He is entirely enrobed in soft goods, though, and he's really supposed to be. I know this particular version affords the ability to have him without the soft goods. So there is maybe one or two things about this figure that are a little bit limiting. But overall, he's still pretty normal. Some of the range on this guy is really nice compared to other figures. And he also has an independently articulated neck, which while it's not the greatest range of motion, it does actually help him move more than he would be able to otherwise. So he has a little bit of the upwards tilt on the head. Not really anything down, maybe slightly. You've got tilt side to side though, and then you've got rotation up there. Arms out at the shoulder. You've got rotation, of course. We've got our single jointed, but slightly better than 90 degrees, rotating elbow. You've got hinges, rotation at those wrists. So normal stuff there. He has a crunch, but it's pretty minimal. So he kicks backwards slightly. He kicks forward a little bit. You can kind of hunch him over. You've got your waist twist. Legs out all the way so he can do the satanic splits if he needs to. Kick forward all the way. You've got good back kick too. No thigh cut on this guy though. It's just a straight barbell through the crotch. So it does allow you to sort of flex the legs in and out like this, but it's not actually a, a twist. It's not really a thigh cut. You've got your single jointed knees about 90 degrees. They are rotational, of course, so you can move them around. And then you've got your ankles down here with a pretty solid rocker. And then you've got decent hinge. It's mostly just, you know, encumbered by the the pants there, so that sculpt does kind of get in the way. So a little kick forward and backward, but the rocker uh, is pretty nice. So he is fairly normal. I mean, if you've got the first Papa, you kind of know what you're getting into on this guy. Nothing too crazy. He's really just going to stand there for the most part, you know, make him look menacing and have him be super, super ghoulish. Now, visually, aesthetically, I really think that they have nailed this. And again, it's just a suited body underneath all this. And we will get to the soft goods here in a second because that's, that's where the figure truly shines. But... This figure, this one in particular, is meant to be displayed both ways. So without the actual makeup and a standard head, which we'll get to that in a second, and the suit, or with the soft goods. So you've got your, your Papa's suited body underneath. And I think it looks good. There's not a whole lot to talk about here. You know, it's, it's just a suit jacket uh, set of arms with a vest and a shirt for the body. And you've got that rubber overlay for the actual jacket part itself. So you could take that off if you want. It might look kind of weird though. And then you've got some standard, you know, pant legs down here, which do look good. Uh, they've got a, you know, a little bit of a wrinkle to them, how they sort of sit on the leg. So you can see there's a little bit of sculpt there to pick up the light. And then that's all in comparison to the super shiny uh, actual shirt and the gloves and the shoes down there. So he looks good, and if you want to display him like this, you know, you definitely can, because that's one of the selling points here, is that you've got two versions of Papa to go with uh, this time around. So you've got, you know, the the leisurely Papa without his uh, vestments on, but of course, 
that is one of the big aspects of this figure, so we're going to have to put that on. And this is where the figure truly shines for me, and it's not just because... Well, it's not just because it's ridiculous, especially when you get to see this in, you know, in person, live in a concert, to see him dressed like this. But it's really wild from an action figure standpoint, because this is a lot of soft goods. Like, it's not just a suit, it's not just a pair of pants, or it's not just a shirt. It's a full-blown, flowing, like, papal robe. And we've seen this before, obviously. You know, we got two of them with Papa One, because he had two different looks. This is more of the same. It's different. You know, it's black and green. It's still got the Velcro pieces on the inside to attach it, so it sort of sandwiches itself together. But you've got full wire all throughout the entirety of the uh, of the robe, so it can be cinched in, and you can have it sort of flowing a little bit better. You might have to work at it, and it's got the sort of loops in the, the upper part here for the arms to go through to help him actually keep it cinched down on the body. You've got all of his fancy frilly lace detail all over it, and then you've got the crucifixes all over it as well. And I just I mean, I just think it looks cool. Like, it's definitely, it's definitely a specific look. You know, it's certainly very evil, kind of satanic looking, and it's just crazy to see this in action figure form. But of course, if you're used to Ultimates at this point, you know what to expect when it comes to the soft goods. And this is more of the same, and I still think this is probably the best example of soft goods in the entire line, uh, just because there's so much of it and there's so much more detail than usual when you compare it to just say, you know, a cape. This is not just a cape. This is basically half of the figure. Uh, it absolutely ramps up everything about the idea behind what Papa is and how this translates into an action figure. So uh, this is incredibly well done. It's not too big. It's not too small. There's a lot of fabric here, but it doesn't overwhelm the figure if that makes sense. And then, you know, of course, lastly, we have to talk about his uh, head sculpt up here. And let me pull his uh, little tassels out because I got those stuck down in the the robe. But we've got our incredibly well-painted face here. I think this is probably, you know, at this point, maybe one of the best painted faces in the entirety of Ultimates. It is a different scheme from Papa One because they don't look the same. This has a much more skull vibe to it. You've got the asymmetrical uh, pupils in the eyes, and just everything about this head sculpt is incredibly clean. The white and the black contrast is really, really striking. And then you've got his silver papal hat, you know, more of the crucifix. You've got the tassels on the back with them on it as well. And I just think it's great. It's awesome. I mean, I'm a big fan of the band. I love Ghost. I've been a big fan for a very long time at this point, longer than I, than I, than I want to remember because they've been around so long at this point. But uh, yeah, I love Papa 2's look, the face paint, the idea behind the overall color scheme, the black and the green for the soft goods, and then that suited body underneath. There is a lot of good stuff going on with this figure. Now, as far as accessories goes, this Papa comes with similar but different stuff to the first Papa. Of course, that one had, you know, an extra set of soft goods because of the two distinct robes. This one doesn't have that. In this instance, we are getting our unpainted head sculpt. So this is you know, Papa underneath, basically. So we've got the mustache, we've got the lips painted, we have sunglasses on him. We do have fully painted eyes under there too, which is kind of surprising. I, I guess I didn't expect that, but the sunglasses are part of him. You're not gonna get those off. And the only real complaint I have about this head sculpt is that it's not painted. You know, it's there's not enough paint on it, so it does have that slightly shiny look to it. It's not too bad, but it also, well, I just wish it was more painted. The neck is fully painted, so it does kind of look off. He is bald underneath also. And you've got the hat that sits on him really, really well. It very much cinches down around his head. We do get a bunch of hands also. So he gets fists on him in the box. You get two sets of gripping hands. It's kind of crazy to me that of all figures that have these, uh, he has them. So you get a set of, a set is two, of course, laterally hinging gripping hands, and you get a set of vertically hinged gripping hands. So you get both versions of gripping hands on this guy, and you get a set of open palm style pose hands. These are reminiscent from the first figure because you need these to hold the Therable. So of course you can have him coming out, swinging his incense around, making a whole scene. This one is silver. We get the microphone. So this comes with the full-on microphone stand, and it does come apart. So the base comes off, and you can have him, you know, to hold the upper portion, or you can take the microphone out, and he can hold just the mic itself. So you do have a few different options 
uh, when it comes to the microphone. There is no paint on this thing, which I wish there was at least a little, but it's still very functional and does look good for what it is. And then lastly, my favorite accessory in this whole set, we get the staff, which, I mean, this is, this is quintessential ghost stuff for me. I'm really happy to see this. Nice silver metallic paint on it. Sculpt is really good. Sized well, it's just barely taller than, than the Papa. And I'm just really happy to see this included. So he has a bunch of good stuff here. You know, it's a, it's a very similar set of accessories to the first figure, but it's different because they're going for, of course, two different Papas. So some of the same kind of stuff we've seen before, but of course we've got some new uh, with this head sculpt, with the hat, stuff like that. So a lot of good stuff here uh, to change up how you want to display this particular Papa. So yeah, overall, I really like this figure. I really like the first figure, so I'm not surprised that I like this one as well. But I think I like it a little bit more just because of the extra stuff that we get this time around. It's still a lot of the same, and that's perfectly fine because, it, well, frankly, it should be. But I love this new face. I love this new set of soft goods. I love the extra head, although I wish the head was fully painted, of course. I like the hat. I love the staff, though. The staff is a huge, huge bonus for me. And then he just comes with a lot of other stuff, too. I mean, he doesn't have an extra set of soft goods like the first figure, but he doesn't really need it this time around anyway. And, and I like the idea that now we've got a way to have him be you know, Papa when he's not on stage. Uh, so I'm happy to add this guy to the collection. And it's another one of those instances where I might need a second one just so I can display both versions. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimates Ghost Papa Emeritus 2. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.